<sighs> Welcome to the vlog. Today, I'm gonna drink bourbon and talk about bourbon. And that's the whole video. I just, I just was like, I want to drink bourbon today. And I thought, I wonder if I can make a video out of this. And then I was like, yeah. drinking today uh, one of my favorite just off the shelf like can probably get it anywhere in the US I would think just just the just, uh, Jefferson's Reserve this stuff is really delicious and it it doesn't have to come this way but you can get it in a really cool tin see look at that cool tin good-looking bottle uh, as I drink I'm just gonna talk about bourbon I don't like the intro of this video at all, but I'm gonna keep it going because I don't wanna do another one. So this video is pretty good so far. All right, I'm happy with it now. I'm using a pretty cool glass today. Today, as if I do this every day, I don't. I mean, I usually drink mm, like a couple, like an ounce or two of bourbon, an hour. Oh, it smells good. Uh, okay. Let's talk about bourbon. Whew. This stuff is good. So I'm assuming if you're watching this, it's because you're new to bourbon. You want to get into it. Well, it's not like a, it's not like a sport or a hobby. You just get into it. I'm thinking of picking up bourbon. Now, the more I think of the, this video, I don't know how it's going to be helpful because bourbon, you try it. And if you like it, then you, you know, you keep drinking it. And if you don't, then you probably, like, I don't know, maybe, I, I guess you could be like me. I got into bourbon because of Donald Draper and Mad Men. Right, okay with you? You look like you know what you're doing. And I thought that Donald Draper character is to me, the epitome of a guy, of manhood, of masculinity. I liked that. And his drink was an old fashioned. And the more I looked into old fashions, I was like, oh, it uses like whiskey or bourbon or something or rye, whatever. And I tried it. I was like, well, that seems to be, you know, like kind of cowboy. That's like the masculine drink. And I'm very masculine. Look at my muscles. I like the idea of drinking bourbon, of that being like, well, that's what I drink. And uh, I didn't like it at first because it's so strong. Like straight whiskey or rye or bourbons can be like, whoa, to you. What was that? Anyways, I guess if you're like me, then this video, I'm just gonna go over, I mean, just gonna go over, go over some bourbon fun facts, information, and then, and then we'll call it a video. I mean, it is a video. I don't know if it's gonna be a great video. After a sip. Mm. It didn't really take me that long to where I just love bourbon now. See, I don't know a lot about bourbon, that's the thing. I know what I like. I have the types and things, but I don't know a ton about it, so I'll learn along with you. Won't that be fun? No, we don't know each other. I'm not that fun. Let's start with my favorite kinds of bourbons. That's a good way to start. There are, in the realm of bourbons that I've tried, there's not a huge difference in flavor, realistically, from like a $20 bottle to a, oh, I don't know, I don't know. The most expensive bourbon I've ever had was like a $200 bottle. So, but bourbons aren't like that expensive. They're not like a, what's the other, scotch. People sometimes, like, if you like scotch, bourbons aren't like scotch. I don't like scotch personally, the flavor. It's too soft and mild and, uh, but it's also very expensive. Bourbons can get expensive, like a hundred dollar bourbon bottle, a hundred dollar bottle of bourbon. Whew, lots of bees, is an expensive bottle. But I think if you did a blind taste test, which actually I've done, so this is good. This is getting to be a good video. My wife for Christmas this year bought me four bottles of bourbon, two that were pretty dang expensive, over $100, and two that were like 30 bucks. And I did a 
taste test of all of them Christmas Day and discovered that the bottle I actually, I think, liked the most, I could go grab it. It's on my bar cart right now. It's called Sonoma, I think. Anyways, I think it was my favorite and it was like $30. Uh, and then we had, I had like a friend of mine who loves bourbon come over and his wife and she really likes bourbon and we did a blind taste test where they poured like glasses for all of us and, uh, and you know, Mark, I don't need to tell you how they did the test, but they did a test. And I think the friend of mine, he got one of the more expensive ones, not the most expensive, but his favorite was like the second to the most expensive. And mine again was the $30 bottle. So... That's the price range-ish. So you don't need to spend a ton of money on a good bottle of bourbon. It's like wine, it comes down to whatever you like. The flavor differences though are fairly subtle. Uh, the differences that I've noticed is not so much in the flavor because they all have like that oaky flavor. They all taste like bourbon for the most part. Some are a little bit like spicier on the front end. You know, like they have more of a ding, a ping when you first taste it. It's like sharper which probably isn't the most descriptive thing, but, um, and then others will burn as you swallow. You do you, you, like your throat, just as you exhale, you like, you know, you take, let's, let's just do it. I'll show you an example. So you take a sip and then it's the exhale after you swallow that gives you that like burn kind of flavor. Burn isn't a flavor. So this is a very descriptive video. But so others that when you try a bourbon, people call it smooth. It's because the end doesn't give you that. You swallow it and you exhale and it doesn't give you that like <gasps> kind of uh, experience. But I personally like that kind of like burn, like, whoa, kind of like, whoa, is that a good descriptive word? I think so. So that's really the biggest differences in bourbon. People tend to like the smoother finish, so you like take it in and it's not too like impactful. It doesn't make you feel like you're dying in your throat. Um, but I kind of like that. I've discovered that ryes give you more of that sharp, hard hitting like punch. It's kind of the difference between like black coffee versus coffee with cream in it. You know, cream just kind of dampens the harshness, the bitterness of, coffee, it dampens the flavor basically. That's kind of the difference between different bourbons. Some bourbons are more mild and smooth. They don't, I just, I burped, I'm sorry. Um, they go down easier, I guess. More like a scotch, a scotch is very smooth. That's why I don't like it. But a bourbon, a good bourbon to me, like a rye or something, punches you, it gives you that hard hitting like, I could, people call it a spice, that's usually what I call it, it's like spicy, it's hot, it's like a psh, bing. Okay. So this bourbon, Jefferson's Reserve, is a pretty, like, it does a good job of both. That's one of the reasons I like it, is it gives you that punch in the back of your throat pretty, but then it goes away really quick. It doesn't linger, it doesn't last, it's just like there, and then it's gone. So I feel like that's a good middle of the road bourbon if you're trying some out. Like a cheap bourbon, Bullet bourbon is fine. I like probably their rye best, but it's a personal preference. I mean, this is all like, you just go out and try some, you know? It's the best way to do it. So I won't go over a ton of different bourbons, but I've tried quite a few. My favorite, just as a heads up, in case you're like, I don't know this guy, but I really liked him. That was favorite bourbon. Good. It's uh, called Bell Mead. It's from an old plantation in Tennessee. They've been making bourbon forever, but then they stopped for a long time. But they've recently started it back up. So they have four different types of bourbon. One of them though is uh, they put it in cognac casks and that is my favorite bourbon. That one is amazing. It has a very soft finish, but it's very bold flavor. I don't know how to describe it. Well, I just did. That was my best attempt at describing it. It's delicious, try it. Some people don't like it at all. It's, but I love it. There's also a Whistle Pig Rye. That's an expensive bottle. The, the Bell Mead stuff is about $80 or so. Um, Whistle Pig Rye is I think $180. It's an expensive bottle. It's delicious. It is, for me, probably gives me the best kick in the back of my throat, but it's a good kind of kick. You know sometimes when like somebody kicks you in the head and it's usually like, hey, I didn't like to be kicked in the head, but once in a while somebody does the right kind of kick in your head and you're like, oh, I liked that one. Anyways, that's Whistle Pig Rye. Was that helpful? 
Is this the worst introduction to bourbon video you've ever seen? <sighs> Probably. Let me give you some more fun facts. Oh, okay, I should go over some of the most popular types of bourbon in the US anyways. By the way, side note, I guess just start here. One of the things I love about bourbon versus whiskey is that bourbons can only be made in the US. Kind of like mm, champagne nowadays. Like if you make champagne in the US, you can't call it champagne. You have to call it sparkling wine or whatever else you call it. I don't remember. What's the fancy name? Anyways, bourbon's the same way. It can only be made in the US. And so I really like that kind of kick of Americana. I like the bourbon, like its roots started not in the US. It was like scotch, whatever, whiskey was other parts of the world, but bourbon, it, I don't know the history. You can read about the history if you want, but bourbon has solid roots in the US and I really like that. And I think bourbon is probably, from what I've read and understand, bourbon is closer to what people were drinking early in the early days of the US. And the, the history that I understand about bourbon is that it started, they were making, let me think here. How did it start? It doesn't matter. I kind of know the, the history of it, but not well enough to repeat it right now. So that's the history of bourbon. That was great. Okay. Most common bourbons that you'll find like at Costco or grocery stores is probably Bullet, Maker's Mark, Woodford Reserve. So those are all like good starter bourbons, but I think they're, I would say like generic, standard. Like if you just wanna taste like, this is what bourbon tastes like, those are good to start with. But then when you get to like this stuff or you get some of the smaller batch, more expensive bottles, you just get more distinct flavors. I guess it's the same thing with wine. Like you can find a really good, decent, solid bottle of wine, you know, for like $20 or so. Um, and then from there, you can spend a lot more money, but you kind of have to get an idea of like, what do you like about bourbon? Same thing with coffee or anything else, I guess. Like as your palate becomes more refined and you understand the different flavor profiles is when you can start getting more expensive bottles because they are different and unique. But if you're, not, if you're new to bourbon, then you probably won't be able to taste the difference anyways. Uh, so that's my tip. Let's find some fun facts about bourbon. Oh, this is interesting. So bourbon is America's only native spirit. That's pretty interesting. As declared by Congress in 1964, it must be made with a minimum of 51% corn aged in charred new oak barrels stored at no more than 125 proof and bottled no less than 80 proof. Interesting. That's very cool. I like that. Let's find some other interesting things about bourbon, shall we? As I scratch my nose. Uh, most bourbons come from Kentucky. I think everyone knows that, but not all of them for sure. Uh, there's a lot of good bourbons coming up all over the country, including California where I live. There's some good bourbons out here. Uh, 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 yeah, okay. Bourbon is named after the House of Bourbon, a powerful French dynasty. I never knew that. Until 2014, there was actually no bourbon produced in Bourbon County. Oh, there's a Bourbon County? Hmm. What? Okay, I'm gonna read you, this is interesting. In response to 1791's Whiskey Rebellion, George Washington decided to incentivize disgruntled tax evaders settled, settled, okay, that's, wait, I can't read that. Jesus, too hard. The governor, Thomas Jefferson, doled out 60 acres of land to each Pennsylvania transplant who agreed to produce native corn, i.e. American whiskey on their land. Jefferson christened, christened the new settlement Bourbon County. That's so cool. After the French Bourbon dynasty, dynasty which held court over Spain, blah, whatever. Once the whiskey started flowing, distillers began shipping their wares, their wares. 60, Pennsylvania, so there's a Bourbon County in Pennsylvania? That is so cool. And I'm drinking Thomas Jefferson bourbon. So I wonder what the history of is. I wonder what the history is of this stuff. Hmm. By law, bourbon barrels can only be used once. Wow. The barrels of bourbon outnumber humans in Kentucky. Whoa. The numbers don't lie. As of 2014, the population of Kentucky hovered somewhere between 4.41 million, while the barrel count topped out at 5.6 million. That's pretty interesting. Ah, I love that. 
Bourbon technically has no minimum aging requirement. That's interesting. Bourbon is America's one and only native spirit. Oh, that's cool. On May 4th, 1964, Congress adopted a resolution declaring bourbon a distinctive product of the United States, stating that no whiskey produced outside the country can be labeled bourbon or sold as bourbon within the United States. That's so cool. I love that. Commencing the patriotic liquor's role in American history. Soon after, the federal standards of... Okay, it doesn't matter. That's pretty... Ding! I like that. Uh, by law, bourbon must be mostly corn. One third of bourbon just disappears. What? Depending on cellaring conditions, three to four percent of bourbon naturally evaporates during each year of barrel aging. Wow. Huh. During prohibition, bourbon was legally allowed if you had a doctor's note. Oh, whoa. Well, that's interesting. I don't know if that's helpful to you or not. But that's the introduction to bourbon. Bourbon is awesome, it's really good. The best way to drink it is to open your mouth and put it in there. Ugh, man, it's good. Now, if you're just starting out with, if you're just starting out with bourbon, you can, uh, and you wanna drink it like straight, like not a mix, not a cocktail, you can add some ice cubes to it. I do that quite often, but not with good bourbon like that. If it's really good bourbon, you just drink it straight, you don't put any ice. But if it's like a bullet or a maker's mark to stop the shelf stuff from Costco, and you don't want it quite as potent, you can add a little bit of water if you want, or some ice cubes, like one to three ice cubes are pretty good, and then once they melt in the room temperature bourbon, it's not quite as potent, but you lose some of that flavor, you know, so. That's it, was that helpful at all? Was this a good video? If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, won't you? Because that helps a lot, it tells YouTube that you enjoyed it. And also, subscribe to the channel. If you like this video, there's a lot of other kinds of videos like this, especially that have to do with cigars and travel and other things. So, subscribe, won't you? It'll help me out a lot. I better go drink more bourbon. All right, what time is it? It's 12.46, <laughs> so I had to do it for the video. So it's your fault. Thanks for watching.